Hey guys, it's Richard. You're watching The Plain Bagel. It's uh, been a while since we've done a party pooper video. Um, and there's sort of a reason for that. You know, as a channel, I don't really want to focus on stock picks and things like that. Um, I'm an analyst and I do that as a living, but realistically, you know, I don't think I would, even with that, I don't think I would add value to the space. I think there's a lot of noise. I don't really want to add to that. So I try to avoid talking about individual positions often. But <laughs> every now and then I'll see a position in the media that's getting a lot of hype that new investors are buying into. And especially when I think things are being a little irrational in terms of valuation, I like to highlight the risks uh, just to warn people about the downsides of these positions. Not to say that they're a sell or anything like that, but just to say that, hey, be careful. Um, <laughs> anyway, today's video is on Tesla. <laughs> the stock for Tesla is up nearly 700% year to date, uh, making it easily one of the best performers for you know companies its size. And even avid holders should be aware that the stock is pretty expensive right now. Um, not only has the price grown much faster than its actual fundamentals, uh, but current multiples right now are just through the roof. It has a forward price to earnings ratio for the next 12 months of 182.9 times, and a forward price to sales ratio of 15.7 times. Uh, for the record, any price to earnings above 20 times is generally considered on the more expensive side. And Apple, which is certainly a, a slightly slower grower, <laughs> but you know has larger margins and, and less debt, um, it has a forward PE for next year of 32 times and a price to sales ratio of 6.8 times. Um, so you can see that Tesla is a very expensive stock in terms of multiples. So what that means is that people who are buying Tesla aren't really buying the stock for what it's going to do next year, but they're buying it for the expectations for many years into the future. Um, you know, they're paying a lot right now, hoping that at some point Tesla will dominate. And not only is that normally risky, you know, you take any stock and if you are trying to buy it for what it's going to be in two to three years, but paying a price today for that value in two to three years, I, not only are you taking risk for downside for the stock to not meet those, you know, optimistic expectations, but when you look at Tesla specifically, if you actually look at forecasts in terms of how many vehicles it, uh, it's going to be selling in the future, namely 10 years from now, the valuation doesn't actually make that much sense. So I want to make this video to show people just how expensive the Tesla stock really is and, you know, to demonstrate the risks faced by investors, because I think a lot of retail, you know, traders are buying Tesla right now as a theme stock, you know, just to get exposure to the electric vehicle space uh, without really knowing what they're paying for it. And I'm fully aware that there's a crowd watching this video right now thinking, uh, how f dare you come after our Lord and Savior Elon Musk and his Model 3, which is gonna save the world. Um, you know, <laughs> there's a lot of passion behind the Tesla stock. And before you berate me in the comments section, I implore you to just hear me out. Uh, you know, none of this is to attack people's intelligence as investors, their integrity or their research as investors. I'm not even, you know, staying here making a claim that I, Richard Coffin, believe that Tesla will fall. I am really just here to highlight the risks. And I think if you are an enthusiastic investor, um, you should hear what I have to say. It might not turn out as, as you know, I'm mentioning and, and the stock might continue to go up. That's totally fine and you might disagree with what I have to say. But just hear me out and, you know, please, uh, you know, give me a chance. <laughs> so in today's video, I'm going to cover what Tesla has done to date in terms of its historical performance, uh, what's expected of it in the EV industry and how that compares to its current price, and the risks that the company faces in achieving that future state. Also, as a quick note, I don't own Tesla or I don't short the position. Uh, this is purely just me, you know, doing a cursory analysis on the stock as an analyst for a company and sharing what my initial findings were. But before we hop into that, I do want to cover some assumptions I made with this video. The first uh, assumption, I guess, is that I'm using figures from December 18th, so the past Friday. <laughs> I take some time to put these videos out and I apologize, but I will make a note if uh, anything has exceptionally changed uh, from that point. The second assumption, which <laughs> I know I'm going to get some pushback on, is that Tesla is a car company, um, an automotive firm. Um, I know that uh, people love to call them a battery or a power company, but at the end of the day, you know, 94% of their revenues come from the automotive segment. Uh, you know, it doesn't really make sense to treat them as anything other than what they are. And sure that, you know, other 6% might prove to be more valuable in the future, but I think most people would agree that the 700% price run up we've seen is tied to the automotive segment, not the other 120th of the firm. The third assumption, I guess, that's probably not the right word, but the third thing is that uh, I will be using forecasts from Bloomberg and Deloitte, uh, just a couple, um, to you know talk about what the industry is gonna go into the future. These forecasts obviously might not pan out as expected, 
could be optimistic or pessimistic to what actually happens. But for now, I just kind of took these estimates at face value and I went from there. And finally, what's probably the most rough assumption I make with this video is that I assume that unit sales growth, so the number of cars sold, that growth rate will be equivalent to dollar sales growth. Um, this is simply to simplify, you know, the brief analysis I do. And if anything, it actually gives Tesla the benefit of the doubt because the company is trying to lower the cost of its cars to consumers. So by assuming that the company will grow as expected and be able to maintain the same car price should be kind of an optimistic uh, assumption to have. But with all that put aside, uh, let's hop into it. I'll start by quickly shooting through what Tesla has done historically, starting with their sales growth rate. Their cumulative average growth rate over the past five years is 50.4%, which is pretty good. Um, not to mention that for year to date, uh, from January to September, their revenue for 2020 grew 20.9%, uh, which is less than their average, but pretty good considering uh, that it's 2020. And also for the full year of 2020, consensus estimates are that sales will reach $30.9 billion, which we'll use later on uh, for our forecast. Now, an important thing about this year, 2020, is that Tesla turned profitable, which is a really important step for any company uh, that investors are putting their money into. Um, the company is expected to achieve an adjusted EBITDA of $6.1 billion. On forecasted sales, that's a margin of roughly 19.7%. And it's expected to achieve a net income margin of 7.8%, which is in line with its peers, but certainly at the higher end. And of course, a lot of the stock performance has been tied to more qualitative factors for the company. Um, recently, management announced that they were planning to vertically integrate their supply chain to mine their own lithium and things like that. Uh, they had their battery announcement and uh, they recently joined the S&P 500 which is sort of a, you know, seal of, of official status, if you will. Um, it often opens you up to more investment from other investors. And, you know, it just kind of shows that you've made it, that you're in the big leagues now. So that's what Tesla's done. And they're pretty good results. Um, but admittedly, nothing that kind of warrants a 700% price return. But the reason investors are paying up so much is because they believe that the future of Tesla has grown by nth degree. Um, so it's the expectation of the future performance of the company is going to be so, you know, such an outperformance that justifies paying such a high price now. So I want to take some time to go over what the industry is expected to do and how that compares to what Tesla is trading at today to kind of demonstrate, you know, how expensive the stock is. According to Deloitte, total electric vehicle sales are expected to reach roughly 2.5 million for 2020, um, of which roughly three quarters are battery electric vehicles like Tesla. Um, so call it 1.9 million vehicles sold. Deloitte is forecasting that battery electric vehicles will reach 25.3 million new vehicles sold by 2030. Uh, so that represents a cumulative average growth rate of 26%, which is pretty good for an industry. This forecast is in line with what Bloomberg is expecting. So that 10 year period is really gonna be that high growth uh, you know, acceleration of the electric vehicle demand. Now for Tesla, the company is targeting to reach 500,000 cars sold for 2020. So I'll assume that they make that. Um, that represents roughly 26.3% of the total electric vehicles sold, uh, which is quite a big chunk of the market. Now, assuming that the company keeps its roughly quarter share of the market for electric vehicles over the next 10 years, uh, that means that its sales growth rate will be the same as the industry, right? But let's give Tesla the benefit of the doubt and say that the company will achieve a 50% market share by 2030. So one in every two electric vehicles sold in the world, uh, battery electric vehicles, will be a Tesla. Even with that, the total sales growth on an annual basis will average 38.1%. Now that's impressive, don't get me wrong. But if you compare that optimistic forecast to what the stock is currently trading at, um, if you do a price to sales ratio of today's price over 2030 sales in this optimistic 50% market penetration scenario, the company's trading at a future 10 year price to sales ratio of 0.85 times. Um, for the record, GM, Ford, Honda, and Toyota all trade around 0.5 times of next year's sales. So even if you bought the stock today and the company fast forwarded, you know, 10 years into the future, you know, next year and became the Goliath that's being forecast in this optimistic scenario, it would still be relatively an expensive car company at today's price. In other words, if you bought the stock today and held it for 10 years time and the price did not change, it stayed between 600 and 700 dollars, uh, then the stock would still be expensive relative to car makers. Now, before you comment anything, I totally understand why people believe that Tesla should not be valued at the same multiple as a Toyota or whatever. Um, you know, they have electric vehicle subsidies in their favor, a growing industry and things like that. But, you know, think of it this way. If today uh, investors decide to value Tesla 
like any other car company, its price would fall over 95%. So, you know, I appreciate that Tesla might be more valuable than a Honda on a valuation basis uh, because it has, you know, larger margins, maybe less debt, larger growth, certainly. But, you know, is it worth twice as much, five times as much, 10 times? In this case, 20 times as much? I don't know, but the more, you know, times you are more valuable versus it's your peers, the more risk there is that, you know, things will correct towards the, the peer group. And all this assumes that Tesla would achieve its remarkable market penetration in 10 years time. And it would lead to a sales growth that really is unheard of for any company its size. Uh, Amazon, for example, for the past 10 years has seen sales growth of 27.6% a year. Uh, and that's a company that's revolutionized how we shop and, and, you know, certainly focuses on cheaper things that are more resilient through recessions and things like that. And you might argue that the exuberant multiple is justified given the other business streams. But if tomorrow Tesla sold its, you know, automotive segment, it would largely be seen as a speculative company based on that other, you know, 6% of the firm because it doesn't have a solid footing in those other areas. They're still largely experimental. Um, and it's not to say they won't turn out, but it's certainly higher risk to rely on that, you know, penning out than to focus on the automotive. So already you can see that Tesla is a really expensive stock, but there's of course the risk that the company doesn't achieve that optimistic forecast. In fact, there's a risk that Tesla falls short, um, that it, you know, suffers, that it, it loses market share. And I think that's something that a lot of people discount. There's competitive risk. Uh, the double-edged sword of being in such an attractive industry is that it attracts new entrants, and we're already starting to see that. And there's certainly the risk that over the next 10 years, someone comes forward with a product that's better, or at the very least competitive to the Tesla you know, Model 3 or whatever. Uh, not to mention that the industry incumbents, you know, the Fords and the Toyotas, are all dedicating multi-billion dollar budgets towards electric vehicle development, because for them, it's their survival, right? So, you know, when you have all these new entrants and these old incumbents all vying for that throne, uh, there's a lot of risk that at any point someone comes forward and says, hey, uh, we happen to have a better technology or a better product than Tesla. There's also operational risks that the company doesn't meet deadlines, that it, you know, misses targets, uh, which it's already done in the past. And, you know, with things like vertical integration into the lithium mining space, which is certainly in economies of scale play, uh, there's a lot of risk there. Uh, you know, it's kind of foolish to assume that a company that's never mined lithium before will be able to enter the industry without any bumps along the way. Uh, you know, they might do well, but again, it's just more risk. And finally, there's, you know, economic risk that even with, you know, government subsidies and, you know, an attractive, you know, well-built product that people can't afford it or that, you know, the demand goes elsewhere because of more cyclical factors. Uh, the fact of the matter is that the electric vehicle is a very expensive capital good that requires the installation of a home battery. And if gasoline becomes cheaper, like it has recently in 2020, it could eat away at electric vehicle demand, right? Because it becomes more competitive to, to buy a gasoline vehicle. And I really do think that a company the size of Tesla is going to have a really hard time achieving the growth rates we've mentioned before, uh, given the nature of its product. You know, one of the reasons Amazon did so well is they sold, you know, anything from paper and pencils to larger items like computers and whatnot. And to me, that stands as a more, you know, defensive uh, offering than something like a vehicle, like a brand new car. So for all those reasons, I'm out. None of this is to say that Tesla won't be a successful company, that it doesn't have an exceptional product, but even an exceptional company might not be a good investment if it's too expensive. Uh, which, as you can see, <laughs> seems to be the case right now. There are plenty of people out there saying that Tesla's a sure thing, that it's it would be foolish not to buy into the future. Uh, but, you know, nothing's guaranteed in investments. There's no perfect investment out there that, you know, promises to earn you high returns. It just doesn't exist. When there are positions that people perceive will have that, what happens is the price tends to rise higher and higher as people bid into it, to the point at which it no longer becomes attractive. And with so much retail demand for Tesla, there's certainly a risk that that's happened with this company. And if you disagree with me, that's totally fine. In fact, I would encourage you to share, you know, any conflicting points or any conflicting forecasts or data that, that goes against what I've shared. Um, I'd like to think, or I'd like to believe that I'm a objective enough investor that if presented with the right evidence, um, I would change my opinion uh, 180. But uh, <laughs> I just ask that you please support it with research and you use a different argument aside from, well, you know, the price is up. 
Anyway, that's the video, guys. Thank you for joining me today. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. And if you disagree with what I said and hate my guts as a result, uh, <laughs> that's okay. Uh, you can like and subscribe if you want to. Uh, but anyway, I appreciate you joining me today. If you're going to tear me apart in the comment section, please go easy on me. And as always, be safe out there.